Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm the co-host, Spirit, aka Papa Fulu. We are people who like to read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime. We realize that we all like similar titles and we could talk about them for hours. So here we are in Podcasts Across Worlds to talk about anime, manga, and everything else we're interested in. For this episode, we're going to talk about Akatsuki no Yona, a manga that I suggested for Spirit to read because I been diligently reading this for a long time i read it every time when a chapter has been translated updated translated i really like the story i didn't care for the anime but i think the story is great we're gonna hear some of spirit's point of view it's so fucking boring and why <laughs> it's so slow I- when people complain about the pacing of the One Piece anime, this is the manga version of that. <laughs> you see a character smile, it takes about three fucking chapters to see the animation of them smiling. <laughs> I, I like a couple of the characters and everything like that, but overall, it's incredibly slow. Can you give us an example of something you thought could have been faster but it was unnecessarily slow for you uh, trying to think right now well <laughs> i reckon the entire thing with the green dragon could have easily been a few chapters less the entire thing with the blue dragon could have been a few chapters less <laughs> the entire thing with the white dragon could have been a few chapters less I, when I was reading it, what I was expecting, like, I, well, reading, like, the description, I thought, oh, this is going to be a slice of life. I'll see what this is like because it's my turn to read what's suggested. And with other stuff going on and everything like that, I haven't had a chance to read it to completion with it being, I believe, around 200 chapters. And so I was reading it in my spare time, and it started off good. The thing with Yona and Sun Hak and Su uh, Suwon, I believe. Yeah, Suwon. When that was all starting and everything like you saw, oh, your characters bouncing off each other, these are friends and everything. Oh, this is kind of cool. A bit of character expose. I understand. And then the main thing happens, which kicks off the entire story with Suwon killing Yona's dad. And I was like, holy shit, where the fuck's this going to go? And it went nowhere for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, Yona's character development, I believe, I think's taking, well, I can understand it taking a long time because of what she's gone through and everything like that. But I think it's kind of poorly written. I a character that kind of very similar in mannerisms and how they are. Have you ever seen the ancient mages' bride? The character I uh, it's been a while since I've watched Ancient Mages' Bride, and I need to watch season two. But the main character Chie, I think it's Chie. She's got nothing to live for. She's been... Oh, yeah, yes, I like this story. I read the manga too. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Yeah, that character, well, she's got nothing to live for. She sells herself into auction, just doesn't care anything that happens to her. She slowly develops and everything like that, gets emotions, learns everything like that. That character is written so much better than Yona is. They haven't gone through the same thing. Like, one's dad's died and their entire world with someone they was in love with has been shattered. And in Ancient Mage's Bride, it's a character who has got nothing to live for, got no one abandoned, and rather than killing themselves, they're just selling the life away. And they're both numb, they're very numb characters. But I know you've read them both and everything like that. And I'm, I think I'm around 50 chapters into Yona, maybe more. 
leading up into that, I think Ancient Mages Bride is a hell of a lot better written. I don't know if you'd agree. Because I know you said you've been reading every time there's a new chapter. But I think they could have gone about it differently or changed the pacing with how this character is because I know Yona's now wanting to be able to protect Hack rather than the other way around. So she's starting to get some personality. But you can write a numb character well. I just don't believe at the very beginning that Yona's been written very well. I think with Yona, for her, I think this is me analyzing her character. So she started out with as... She started out as a princess that was very, very sheltered. Very sheltered. She didn't know what was going on outside of her palace. All she knew what was happening inside the palace. And the palace is huge. And she doesn't know about the past battles, the current battles. She doesn't know about like the politics. She only knows about the people who she's interacting with. And then when her father dies and she escapes... She learns what's been happening. She learns about what happened in the wars, what's happening in the villages. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of bad stuff happening because her father didn't want to go into war. Her father was a pacifist and she thought her father was like the best, like the best ruler. And she's learning that all, a lot of his decisions have consequences. So it's sort of like she's getting like a lot of mind blown things she thought were happening were actually not like her whole world is turned upside down. It's like she was living in a delusion and she's slowly learning that. So she went from someone who didn't really have a personality slash um, purpose she went from someone who didn't really have a purpose, she was just a princess, to someone who is learning what's really important to her. So the first thing was revenge and hawk. Those were the first things that were important to her. And as she interacts with more people, for example, the dragons, she's starting to develop. And I think that's why it's so slow. Because there's a lot of people she meets, like a lot. And she's still she's still developing. And half of the people she meets aren't even necessary to the goddamn plot. <laughs> For example, uh, when she so there's dragons. So Yona is, is the reincarnation of a red dragon. Back in the day, there was a red dragon, and he Crimson had dragon, and he <laughs> had four dragons. Uh, it was white, blue, green, and yellow that's what you told me. I don't believe I've got to the yellow dragon. So these are four dragons. Um, they are loyal to the crimson dragon and they help him. And the crimson dragon improves the kingdom, improves the land. And after that, he, and they're all in human form. And after that, he dies, but he left these citizens. And it's been many, many, many years to the point where some people are like, Yes, I am a descendant of the Crimson Dragon. Yes, I have his blood in me. And other people are like, Ugh, is he real? Was he real? So that's how far apart the Crimson Dragon and where we are is are. So we a lot of people think that the dragons are a myth. They're not real. But we learn that the four dragons that were protecting the Crimson Dragon, they've all had descendants, chosen ones to have their power. So the White Dragon had the Dragon Claw. The blue dragon had the dragon eyes. Green dragon had the dragon feet. And spoiler for <laughs> Spirit, the yellow dragon was immortal. So we have all these dragons here that are indefinitely, unconditionally loyal to the crimson dragon. And Yona is the reincarnation of the crimson dragon. We confirm that because all these dragons feel an attachment to her a calling to be there for her protect her be loyal to her and she yona's like confused she's like i'm just a girl like what can i do and they're like it's okay we just want to be with you and as the story progresses she sees all the strife happening in the kingdom 
And she feels a responsibility because it was her dad's decision that caused these problems. And so she tries to fix them. She tries to work with them. And she's taking responsibility. And you're thinking, okay, so does she want to be the next ruler? Does she want to kill the guy who murdered her father and become the ruler? And uh, throughout the story, as she's meeting people and helping them, solving problems, she's like, no, I don't want to be a ruler. I just want to fix things. I just want to help people, but I don't want to be the ruler. But, you know, somehow she gets thrown in these situations where people are like, you are Princess Yona. You need to do something. And she's like, no, um, me and my dragons, we do our own thing. We, we, we're in the shadows. <laughs> and there's like this part where she's like, we are the bandits. We are here to save the day. <laughs> I just believe it they could have changed how it starts off at the beginning because for me personally, I do believe it's too slow. I guess with the white dragon part, all they had to do is like, hey, we found you, let's go. Instead of like stretching it out and seeing how he's treated there because he's treated like he's a god. He's like the most important person there. Oh, I didn't have any problem with that. I just feel like some of the stuff was either very lackluster or it just w- it wasn't explained in a very interesting or entertaining way. <laughs> it, is, it came across like this this guy, White Dragon, we worship. That, that's how it felt. I'm like, okay, so you took that long to tell me that. Right, <laughs> right, right. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. <laughs> they yeah. took they took like these many chapters just to say that. <laughs> yeah, but it would have been nice to have seen more of that character in their setting, or how every time it just say, "Oh, Crimson Dragon." Now I have to follow that. I think the only person that seems a little bit conflicted was the Green Dragon. I think so far the Green and Blue Dragon they have the best introduction of characters in the story. You should find out the blue dragon's backstory, which was kind of sad. And the green dragon's very nonchalant and trying to fight fate, which was very interesting. But it's just told in a very, I believe, lackluster way. The white dragon, you just saw Ari's praised by the entire village. It'd be nice to see a side of him other than the pompousness that you first see of him, like, emphasize the pompousness. It just was a very cut-and-dry character. For that one, I believe he was was pompous because, you know, like we said before, he's praised for being the white dragon. So there's that. There's that factor. Another factor is you are the white dragon that protects the crimson dragon. That's two. So he's important because of that. Uh, Three. You are powerful. You can destroy a lot of people. Three. Oh, you see him fuck shit up later on. But yeah, it's it, but the pompous nature was just uh, the way that they portrayed it was. Oh, this it just like calling someone that, that character pompous, and that's it. Just m- the way it showed, it didn't really delve into the character. It didn't show you how pompous the war or the sort of praise that they get. It was just like everyone bowing and all that, not showing that. Because the way it seemed that they were going to show is like this village worships this dragon and everything's about this dragon and everything like that. And you didn't even feel much of an entitlement coming from it. It was just like character, pompous. Mm -hmm. Like very one note. And it would have liked to have made that note hit a bit harder, like embellish on it slightly. Mm. But... It just seemed very, it, it sh- like I say, when you see watch the, I watched the One Piece anime and it feels like the term one, <laughs> one panel into five episodes. That's kind of what the feeling I got from watching, I uh, mean, reading the manga. It's kind of like something that could have been explained in detail or adding detail to it. It was just one thing stretched out. And 
it felt like there was room for a lot of information there or just a lot of character development or just a lot of something. But I was left wanting. I think you I think you'll get it later on when you get to the yellow dragon. Or maybe even like so there's different tribes too. There's wind, water, earth, fire tribes. Each area is different from each other. And that's how each dragon's area was similar. So the white dragon, they knew their history. They knew about the white dragon. They praised it. You get to the blue dragon. They are scared of the blue dragon. They think the blue dragon is dangerous. They think the blue dragon is sort of like a curse. The green dragon, they want to control that power. So they imprison the green dragons. So each dragons were treated differently. And then you'll learn how the yellow dragon was treated too. And what's interesting is their ancestors. So you know how like the blue dragon, he was treated badly, but his ancestor was treated like a hero. It's like, how did a hero and his descendants get different treatment? What happened? Like, I'm wondering about that. And they sort of explain that later on in the story. Sort of. Not fully, but sort of. And I'm like, it just doesn't make sense. How come the white dragon is being treated so well while the others weren't? Like, it's one of those, I would like to like it because I can see potential there. And I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> because... Because I do want to see where it goes because it feels like it's building up to something. But <laughs> it's kind of like this song by Paramore, literally, Brick by Boring Brick. <laughs> <laughs> I just think certain ways they've explained stuff and everything could have been a lot better or they could have added stuff or cut down stuff because. Some of the chapters felt like they were extended just for the sake of getting out a full length chapter. Like, oh, we've got to get this art by this week. Let's do it. And this is no slight on the mangaka. The art style is beautiful. The art style is amazing. But the story's not holding me. And it's not a thing of not enjoying Slice of Life because uh, one of my favorite animes is Castletown Dandelion, which is a Slice of Life. But the way this is going is just a bit slow. And it's not... Like, it gets up to a point where it feels like, oh, this, this is going to hold my interest. It just drops it instantly. I would like... Like I say, it's one of those I would like to like. But so far, it's very meh. <laughs> I thought it was going to pick up for you by the Green Dragon's arc, but you said it's still not. It's no, still it's, slow. It's still because the Green Dragon's art picks up. It's like holy shit with the raid and all that stuff with the pirates. And it's Yona like, kills that pirate. And he's like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then as soon as that's done, back to tedium. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was nice to see some character development in Yona. But as soon as it's done, it's like, nope, back. Back to the way it was. Well, I understand character exposition and character building and all that sort of stuff. But it's just the pacing, really, more than anything else. And I believe poor, pain, poor pacing can kill good things. Like, I'm pretty sure there's got to be that for, out there for everyone, like a movie that you enjoy, but it's a slow burner. But by the time it starts getting good, you've already lost interest. Mm, I see where you're coming from. And it's going to be the same with certain anime shows. And you'll start watching it, and the episode, like, you watch a 12 episode anime, and it doesn't get good till episode eight. You're not really going to care by episode eight. <laughs> it's just, you've already feel like, oh, this is boring. One description I can put it in, and it might not make sense to a lot of people, is it's kind of like buying a record. And only enjoying a couple of songs. Ah. Uh, Was it worth buying that when you could have just listened to the songs? Thank like God you, like. you can oh, you can buy just one song now. <laughs> yeah, but do, do you know what I mean? If that's how I would see it, like you, you can buy an album and you might like two songs on the album. I've done that before. 
But are you yeah. gonna? But are you gonna listen to the full album just to get to those songs? Hell no. Exactly. That's the sort of description I'm giving. Like this, like it's a lot of tedium for a couple of good moments so far. Let's see. Let me. Let me. I'm. I'm looking where I think you would like it when it picks up. I think you'll like it okay. when it picks up at the Water Tribe. And there's a part for the fire tribe. It's some character development with a different character, a side character. Uh, it's a funny chapter. And then um, later on, way, 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 way later on, I want to say like in the hundreds, uh, we're going to encounter the Xing kingdom, X-I-N-G. That mm-hmm. one it'll pick up too. But that's like fifty Wait. chapters later. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, um, we we are going to revisit this though. Once yeah. I've once I've read this and got to up to date and everything like, we will come back and discuss this. See if my opinions have changed. But right now, <laughs> this is one of the most boring manga I've ever read. I do know, like, when it gets to that part, it does talk about other characters. And you're going to think it's really tedious. Like, why are they talking about the side character? But later on, it's all going to come together. It's like they're giving you a puzzle piece, little by little. (laughs) And you're like, what is the point of this? (laughs) I've got no problem with that, as long as it's fucking not boring. (laughs) Is this the episode that where I'm going to get all the hate? (laughs) Nah, 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 nah. Uh, I mean, I mean, some people have asked us to to talk about, to have an episode to talk about manga and anime we hate. And we're like, I can't think uh, of any. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't hate this because I've got no opinion on it other than it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You're like, boring. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an anime now that I watched and I stopped watching because it was boring. Oh, wait. One Piece. <laughs> um, I stopped watching One Piece because I thought it, was, it wasn't it was going to take that long because you know how he wants to be the Pirate King and it's like, okay, it's taking a really long time for you to be the Pirate King. You're meeting so many people, everybody else who wants to be a Pirate King. It's like, it's never ending. Is there, like, what? I'm like, okay, I'll just wait until you become one. Well, let me know what. Let me know when you're a pirate king, then I'll watch. <laughs> the, yeah. the manga for One Piece is much better paced, but when it comes to the anime, it, it's atrocious. It is, I, people may like it, but I don't like one chapter being like five or six episodes. Well, that's how it feels. But I enjoy One Piece. But it's been... One Piece has been around for years. But I swear, at the end of that fucking show, or manga, or whatever it comes first, if the One Piece is fucking friendship, I'm going to be mad. Why? (laughs) Because it's meant to be the ultimate treasure. I'm expecting something world changing or something like that, like genuine power behind it, not fucking friendship. <laughs> the greatest treasure is your life experiences and adventure that you can only experience as a pirate. <laughs> yeah, if that's the fucking one thing, <laughs> I'm going to be mad. I know that's happened. I know I've seen something where that that's what it was, and that's why I'm like, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> I've seen stuff like that with treasure hunts, or you see, like, in shows and everything like that, and the real treasure is the bonds you form along the way. Go fuck <laughs> yourself! <laughs> Where's my goddamn money? <laughs> Give back my time! <laughs> That's how I feel reading Yona. Get back my time. <laughs> uh, I think with Yona, what kept me going is I, because I kept reading it 
as the chapters were updating, I didn't know it was I didn't know how many more chapters there were ahead of me. I was anticipating Yona's revenge against Suwon and her relationship with Hawk. I was wondering where those two were going. And there there has been development. Oh yes, yes there has on both on both things. Yeah, and it's just taken 193 chapters to fucking get there. <laughs> Going back to other manga we've talked in the past, and you got and even manual like you show leveling. Not, I know, it's, I understand it's not the same genre, but you do have those slowdown moments where it is more expose. But at least it's interesting. <laughs> and I'm reading this, and I'm kind of thinking, wait, hmm, Sword Art Online's pacing is horrible because it. <laughs> it's too quick. And this one's pace is horrible because it's too slow. And I'm starting to wonder if you just like shit with poor pacing. <laughs> no, it's because I didn't know it was going to take that long. <laughs> like, it would end like, with, with like a cliffhanger. I'm like, no, what happens next? <laughs> <laughs> like the, the green dragon arc where she's like stuck in the in the ship. I'm like, shit. It just ends like that. Are they are, are they gonna catch up to Yona? Are they gonna save her? Is it what's gonna happen? Oh no! It, I had those moments and I had to like wait a week or two for the next chapter. I had the suspense of waiting. You have the is it over yet? Yeah, I'm, 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 I feel like we're a little kid in the car going, are we there yet? <laughs> are we at the good part yet? <laughs> and then when there's a good part, it's kind of like drinking a Red Bull and then the caffeine just runs out the second you've finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eating a bowl of ice cream and then you look down and you realize there's no more ice cream. <laughs> like I say, I can see the story there i can see what i want to like and there have been bits i've liked but it feels like there's a lot of filler yeah i can see where you're coming from on that one i think when you get to the fire try part you're gonna think that's filler i'm predicting you're gonna think that i was gonna cheat and watch the anime <laughs> you can watch the anime I, you can i don't want to watch the anime because it's gonna be the exact same shit i've already read <laughs> and I think I think you're um you're because the anime ends with the yellow dragon. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. I'm not re watching what I've already read. Like they end when they meet, not even knowing he's the yellow dragon. The anime ends when they meet him. And when I saw that, I was like, that's it? You're not even gonna do the yellow dragon part? Oh, come on now. You you cannot do this when there are four dragons and she meets four dragons and you just stop with the yellow dragon by just seeing him. You don't you don't even announce who he is. You must be complete is what I'm thinking. That's why I was like upset with that anime. <laughs> I was like, man, you guys are such teases. You're horrible. How dare you tease it like that? Ah, uh, I know what Yona's like. Yona is like a doll that suddenly develops a life of her own. That's what Yona is like. No, because then we've got Violet Evergarden, which is the exact same thing. A doll that develops a life of her own, but that was good. Made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, Violet Evergarden was developing because with all the people she was meeting. Yeah, you're just meeting new people. And it's not as <laughs> not as much as an impact. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now you see my problem. <laughs> Eric, right. do you have any more you want to talk about uh, Akatsuki no Yona? <laughs> Watch Violet Evergarden instead, it's better. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stick with it. I don't know how long it's going to take me. But we will be coming back to this. 
Yeah. This is a review in progress. Yeah. So far, it sucks. <laughs> Been a little harsh on it. <laughs> Which, um, you know, it makes sense because you are about, what, 42 chapters in? 49? And 160 to go in early. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you haven't seen the Violet Evergarden episode of the podcast, go go what, listen to that. It's more interesting. <laughs> uh, B stars does a better job. <laughs> How many people does Lego see me? And he's numb as fuck to start. <laughs> I think this is just the episode where I compare everything to why it's better than Yona. I'm suspecting that Akatsuki no Yona is a ongoing manga. It is ongoing. Yeah, it's an ongoing manga. So I'm suspecting that the parts where you think are fluff are actual fluff just to fill up that volume. So you say 90% of this is fluff? Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. I would say like maybe 60%, 60. <laughs> That's still too much fluff. Come on, you've read some manga that had fluff in it back in the day when we used to buy manga <laughs> whenever still... they got released, going to the bookstore and you see, oh yeah, it's out now. Before internet was updating us that something's out. Yeah, you'd go and read it and feel like, I've wasted my money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, yes, there have been stuff like that. And I've said there's been shows, there's been movies, there's been TV series, anime, manga, books that I've read and thought, this is boring. And by the time it starts getting good, I've already lost interest. I think what it is, is that because people have made so many good examples of a story, like how it's developing, you would think, the other authors would adapt to it and be like, oh, well, I, I should make it like this. Well, not really that. It's just more of a case of everyone's got tastes and everyone, what they believe and how they perceive things is different. Like something I'm going to enjoy, not everyone else is going to enjoy. Shows I like, you're, you may not like, uh, vice versa, this being one of them. And <laughs> it's the case, like, case, not everyone's fair. Not everything's for everyone. And it doesn't need to be. Like I say, not everyone enjoys horror. I love horror. There's some people out there that don't like the genre. Like it's different, like different genre games. Like I, people love Dark Souls. I don't enjoy it. Do I believe that that shouldn't exist? Hell no. It is one of those cases. Everyone's got their own taste, and it's okay to not like something. But just because someone doesn't like something doesn't mean that reflects the the thing. It doesn't reflect it. Like. Yona, I I believe it's boring. And I know I've been going on and on and on a tirade and everything like that. More so for comedic effect. But I do mm -hmm, genuinely... That's I, what you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more for comedic effect. I do genuinely believe it's boring. But I love the art style. The art styles are gorgeous. But just because I think it's boring, do I think it's bad? No. It's So far, it's just not for me. Everything's subjective. Like, I'm pretty sure there's stuff that you've read or watched or something like, oh, this is amazing, you should see it, and you've watched it already and be like, I don't get it, why Why is this liked? <laughs> that was not an answer, that was a laugh. <laughs> I'm trying to remember something Sword. like that. Uh, everyone hates Sword Art Online, you like it. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, I have like interesting taste. <laughs> let's, let, let's call him eclectic. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a case of not everyone's for everything, and that's okay. And my opinion on something should not form someone else's. Because I don't necessarily like something doesn't mean you shouldn't. It's okay to have a similar opinion on something, but someone else's opinion shouldn't form yours. You should not like something because you not like you do not like it, not because someone says I don't like it, and you have to think, yeah, if they don't like it, it must suck. Because you, everyone's going to find that thing that they like that other people don't. Hmm. 
And that place for everyone. Instead of having a comedic ending, we've had a serious talk at the end of a podcast. Well, it's real. It's like, you know, all jokes aside, you know, it's more of a more detailed version of, uh, it depends on the person. Mm. That's why I said, because I don't like it, it shouldn't form anyone else's opinion. Yeah, because like sometimes when like people hear that, it's like, that's not a real answer. That's like a cop out answer. But it's true. It's it's true. It's like, uh, well, I like it because of this. I don't know if you like that kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> I like because this, this, and this. Uh, but according to this person, he doesn't care for it because of the pace. So I don't know. Are you are you like me that like focuses on these things? Or are you like him that notices the pacing? Like, it really depends. Maybe you're both. <laughs> Like we don't know you. <laughs> like who are you? <laughs> well, it's kind of thingy. Like, like you, that's why I give you magical girl sight because it was something I genuinely enjoy, and I know you're not that big into horror, and it is something that's kind of far on that scale, and it is something completely different from anything else we've discussed. And I think this brings us to the paw question. Paw question of the episode is: What is a story that you got into and you were very surprised that it was actually great? Mine was My Hero Academia. I totally judged the art, and after watching the anime, that proved me wrong. I ended up really liking the story. I'm Lihua Superfina, host of Podcasts Across Worlds. You can find me on all social media platforms at Lihua Superfina. Weekly, I upload videos about video games, manga, and candy masks on youtube.com slash Lihua Superfina. I also stream every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays on twitch.tv slash Lihua Superfina. Hi, I'm Spirit Shop co-host of podcast records world and also content creator streamer on the channel you'll find in the description and um, one of the upcoming shows is tinfoil talks where we deep dive into bullshit in video gaming we take a topic and we find out how it got there why it's there come up with some excuse until we believe it ourselves and then put it out into the stratosphere and that concludes our episode of podcast across worlds thank you all for tuning in keep reading manga Keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next episode. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump. <laughs>